Now that we've taken a look at inscribed angles, we're going to take a look at other angle measurements and segment lengths and things that we can do with our circles. So theorem 1213 talks about angles that cross inside but not through the center, not inscribed angles. This one tells us the measure of an angle formed by two lines that intersect inside a circle is half the sum of the measures of the in intercepted arcs. So what that means is with the angle one that is shown in the diagram here, the measure of angle one is going to equal one half the sum of x and y. So if the angles, or if the lines cross inside, and this would work for line segments also as long as they are chords, we find the intercepted angles or the uh, intercepted arcs on the two sides and find the average of the, those two. Theorem 1214 has a similar idea, but it works with lines that cross outside. And this one tells us the measure of an angle formed by two lines that intersect outside of a circle is half the difference between the two intercepted arcs. So pictured, you see three different representations of how this could happen. You can have uh, two rays that go across. You could have one tangent and one ray that crosses, or you can have two tangents. Any way that you do it, the measure of angle 1 is going to be 1 half of the difference. So it's going to be x minus y. And you always have to go the larger minus the smaller because we can't have negative angles when we're doing these measurements. So how can we use this to solve unknown value at the uh, finding some angles? So in our first diagram here, the measure of angle x is equal to 1 half of the two intercepted arcs. So it's half of 46 plus 90. So that means it's going to be 1 half of 136. Half of 136 is 68. So the measure of angle x is 68 degrees. Now some will say, well what about if we're looking for the one straight across from it, would it be the same? And the answer is yes, simply because these are vertical angles. So it will work both ways. Then we could use it to find supplementary and the other two arcs, but that is a little bit beyond what we're needing for this. Let's look at our second diagram. Let's find the measure of angle Z. And actually it's the measure of arc Z. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that 20 degrees is equal to one half of, and remember this angle intercepts outside of the circle, so it's going to be our major, our larger arc, 95 degrees, minus our smaller one, which is z. So simplifying, multiplication property of equality, multiply both sides by two, we get 40 degrees is equal to 95 degrees minus z. Adding z to each side, we have z plus 40 degrees equals 95 degrees. And then subtracting 40 through subtraction property of equality, we come out with z is equal to 55 degrees. So we can find a lot of information about angles simply by knowing a few pieces and locating where the angle is formed. Remember, if it's formed inside of our circle, it's the average of the two arcs. If it's formed outside of our angle, or outside of our circle, it is the average of the difference between those two arcs. So, what else can we do? Well, we can use this to find line segments also. But, so let's take a look at the theorem that comes along with that one. Theorem 1215 states, for any given point and circle, the product of the lengths of the two segments from the point to the circle is constant along any line through the point and circle. Now what this means is it's going to come out in three different forms. The first that we're going to look at in this first diagram is if the lines intersect inside. Well, in this case, the products of the chord segments are equal, so that means A times B is going to equal C times D. In our second case, 
if the point is outside forming two intersecting lines that are not tangent, what we get is that w plus x times w will equal y plus z times y. So the product of these intersections times the entire segment, that segment is called a secant. And simply put, a secant is a line that intersects a circle that is not tangent. So the length of the entire secant times just the outer segment will equal the other secant and its outer segment. Now our third case is that the secant, same as we had before, so in this case y plus z times y is going to equal a tangent line squared. So we have three distinct cases here and we have to look at each one in its parts. So let's get a little bit of practice with a couple of these. In our first diagram, we're looking at case two from the previous page. So what we're going to have is that 20 plus 14 times 14 is going to equal x plus 16 times 16. Now, a lot of things going on here, so let's begin by distributing, simplifying. We'll just simplify first. We get 34 times 14 will equal x plus 16 times 16. So let's distribute that right-hand side and multiply the left at the same time. So we get 16x plus 256 is going to equal 34 times 14, which is 476. Now, subtracting the 256 with our subtraction property of equality, we have 220 is equal to 16x. Through division property of equality, we divide both sides by 16, and we come out with x being equal to 13 and 3 quarters. So, Set up your ratios and run through your order of operations and just simplify until you come down to your answer. Now on our other side, we have a case one situation. So that case told us that the products of the segments would be equal. So that means that three times seven will equal six and a half times m. Three times seven is 21. 21 equals 6.5m. Using division property of equality and dividing both sides by 6.5, we come out with m being approximately equal to 3 and 2 tenths. There's going to be a little bit of a difference, but that is a fair approximation. So, three new theorems here dealing with either line segments or angle measurements and our circles. Also a new term of secant, a segment of a angle that passes through the edge of a circle. So make sure you're studying these and have them all ready to go.